We're live. Hello. We are live. We Hello. are. <laughs> we are. We've made it. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the resurrection debate by Leo Tolstoy. Are we? Are we ready? <laughs> are we ready? I'm not about to the snow. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yes. Emma threw it in the snow and then retrieved it. <laughs> um, I think this is going to be a very interesting debate because we have me who really enjoyed it, and we have Emma who um, didn't enjoy it that much. <laughs> So, yes, I think this is going to be a very interesting discussion. Like always, we're just going to do the same structure that we have done in the past. Um, and, yeah, do you want to start with our unbiased thoughts? Just get right into it. Um, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm going to I'm gonna say something. I'm going to start with something good. Um, okay. Great. That's it. That's all you get. Okay. Um, for this one, I think it was really cool to see Tolstoy. Like, it's so different from his other three books we read. Um, yeah. And it was cool to see him, like, addressing these issues and, like, going deeper into them and, like, showing stuff that, um, like Carolyn was saying, we don't really get to see in a lot of other Russian novelists and, like, just really examining the um, injustice of the justice system. And I was like, yes, that's amazing. I love this presentation. Like, he really, like, that's what the whole book is about, basically, if you haven't read it, um, which is great. However, um, on the whole, I really, I just like really, really detested it. Like all that stuff was amazing. Don't get me wrong. But like, you can still, you know, you can still agree with everything a book is saying and hate it. And I hate, <laughs> hate it. I think I gave this a two star. It's definitely like my least, least favorite book we've looked at in the book club. Um, I just don't Even think. You hated it more than Pickwick. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and at first, like going through it, it wasn't really like a, a like a burning hatred or something I was really angry about. It just wasn't keeping me like engaged or like I just didn't really care. Right. Like I was like, yes, this is amazing. Like this is a really good study. This is a vast wealth of historical information and like someone trying to right so many wrongs. But as a as a book, as a novel, um, I was not I was just not loving it. And then we got to like the last little bit. And then that's when it kind of turned into like this just yeah. anyway we'll get there I'm not gonna like okay okay I'm yeah. very curious of like why you hate it so much like okay you have specific yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay um yeah. yeah because I'm just yeah see I I see a lot of mixed opinions if you guys want to comment like the star rating or if you liked it or didn't like it um I think that'd be really interesting I gave well I feel mm -hmm. like for Tolstoy, it's so hard to give a star rating because, yeah. like, I'm such a fan of his. But yeah. for this one, I was just telling Emma that I think out of all of the Tolstoys we've read for the book club, this is probably my least favorite in terms of, like, as a narrative story. But I do think that it's – and my whole main point for the entire live show is, like, the significance of its historical context and to understand it in the time that it was written in and how revolutionary it was. So it really did like pave a whole huge road and a new genre in Russian um, literature. And so I think that its place in, in literature is so important, but I do feel like I understand why some people might not have enjoyed it. Um, it's Tolstoy, so it's five out of five for me. Amazing. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, Emma. <laughs> <This one. laughs> I do that all the time. Um, but yeah, so I really did enjoy it. I I feel like because it's Tolstoy, it's so hard to rank because there are so many different things about his writing and about like how he creates a narrative that I enjoy. So trying to put it up against his other works. Um, Oh, someone said, I mean, after Annika and uh, Liam would give us this. Well, something that I do want to point out is I kind of regret us scheduling it at the time that we did because this was written in 1899. Tolstoy passed away in 1910. So I think in the grand scheme of things, we did skip over a ton of writing that he's done and development that we haven't read through yet. So I do feel like I wish we saved it a little bit later and got more of that um, evolutionary growth through his writing because yeah. um, then I feel like we would have had a better understanding and I, I think the historical context that he's writing about will have made more sense yeah. because we would have read other stuff so just yeah putting that out there um, but yeah let's see um, yeah 
two stars, three stars, um, five stars. That's awesome. Um, here, Lucy says, I definitely understand why people wouldn't like it because it's very explicit in what it's preaching, but I like how focused and direct it was. Definitely. I like how, I liked how Tolstoy was just very straight and to the point, and he wasn't too worried about, like, how beautiful the narrative was. He just wanted to get his message across, and I really appreciated that. Um, we have another five stars. Okay, that's good. That, there's a good range, so I feel like this is going to make a very interesting discussion. So without further ado, um, you said you had a point about his life in terms of the influence, right? Yeah. Is there anything you want to start with before that, though, or no? Um, his life or something. I do have, like, some historical okay. context that I want to go through, but I don't yeah. want to be, like, boring and trudge through it. But I no, feel like... Not something. Okay. Um, something that I think I was trying to remember throughout the whole book, and I think the main point of my whole side of the debate today is okay. understanding the historical events that happened at the time that it was written in and before the time that it was written in. So I have a few points that I wrote down in my notes that I'm just going to read from because there are like dates and names that I don't want to get wrong. So in 1881, um, Alexander II was the Russian czar. Um, he was assassinated by a revolutionary group called the People's Will, and um, Alexander II was the most liberal of the czars and he abolished serfdom in 1861 and he was very progressive. A lot of people were hopeful for the future, but because um, because he was assassinated by this group, um, he then got um, his son followed after him, Alexander III. He had more of a totalitarianism, uh, totalitarian approach and he was just no nonsense and he eventually got rid of that group that assassinated his father um and so and so that was kind of like he alexander took the hope that um alexander the third took the hope that his father gave to the people and kind of took it away yeah. and um, and anyway, and then he died in 1894, so five years before Resurrection came out in 1899, and um, and then Nicholas, Nicholas II now was the czar, and he tried to compromise with the two, so he had more of a, an approach that landed between the two that preceded him, and he eventually let the people feel like they had hope again for the future, for change, and for progression, and that was around the time that Tolstoy wrote this novel, and censors weren't as bad anymore, people were much more hopeful, and it felt like change was once again possible, and mm -hmm. when Tolstoy came out with this book, it was, um, it was like confirming that that change is possible and that there is hope still in the world. Um, this was also, obviously, like we've spoken about, this is his last full novel. Mm -hmm. And um, we have like shorter novellas like The Death of Ivan Ilyich and, and his other major works like Haji Murat, which is very um, well known and well loved. This was one of the last Russian realist novels of the 19th century. And it also was a gateway novel to social realism, which basically it meant that it just invented a whole new genre for Russian literature. So I feel like my whole point is that as a book, it was so important and prevalent at the time. And I think we have to acknowledge that even if it's not like, because I feel like what I, didn't love about this book was that it felt very um I don't know even how to word it it just there was a quality of his other books that felt very narrative and it felt like a full story and it was just like a beautiful experience where this felt more um like he was trying to get a message across and he wasn't too worried about um like ly lyricism in his writing or focusing too much on making it like beautiful and flowery comparing people to oak trees and the sun and things like that we love in his other works but yeah do you know what I mean yeah absolutely, absolutely. so yeah that's just something that I will I'm I think I'm going to keep referring back to that during the debate just because okay. you know I think that that is something yeah, that's going to come up again yeah. um but yeah so that's like my whole main spiel um I just want to see. Um, 
Oh, <laughs> I'm glad it isn't just Karen and me against all of you. Me too, me too. Um, we have to have a strong team, Team Tolstoy and Team Dickens. Okay, anyway, um, do you want to share your part? Yeah, um, I <laughs> feel like I had to do some like extra reading because I don't know, mm -hmm. um, this one was just, I really didn't like it. And I was like, okay, I have to like get a little bit deeper into it. But something that I found out when I was reading some essays and stuff is that a lot of this is based on like a an experience that Tolstoy had himself when he was younger because we all know that when Tolstoy was younger he wasn't the greatest person um, alive basically and then just from one of his um, biographies it says in old age the moralizing Tolstoy regretted his predatory relations with various women in his earlier years and in particular um, resurrection does like have a lot of inspiration from like a literal exact same case that um, did happen mm -hmm. with a chambermaid that was in his family service who was this woman named Agatha um, and he says to his biographer I seduced her she was sent away and she perished um, and I was like wow because I didn't know that until I had finished reading the book yeah um, and then I just made me kind of go back and like reevaluate the whole thing because I had no idea like that event had happened in Tolstoy's life and that he had done that um, mm -hmm. and then I'm like what does that like say about the novel it takes it like a uh, level down and makes it a lot more interesting and like relates it a lot more to the author but also in that way it's like how much of the book is like Tolstoy's inner conscience like coming out and like obviously he's seeking for his own redemption and he wants his own forgiveness which he can't really ever achieve but um it just like I don't know it added like a cool layer getting to know the author better but then on the other side I'm like how much of this novel is like being created just because he feels um awful about what he's done and stuff and that doesn't take away from all these super important things that it accomplishes but I just thought it was like just like I had no idea like it yeah blew my mind but um yeah and obviously Nekhludov goes on a very different um and Maslova has a very different ending too but yeah. yeah I did not know that did you know that before going into it I imagine I, you I, I did hear that yeah. yeah um I didn't yeah. I didn't have like full context but I did yeah. know that he was influenced by because I feel like that's so much of Russian literature and so much of Tolstoy's like Anna Karenina as well it's all relating to experiences that he's at least witnessed or gone through and he puts that in his writing which I feel like all all writers do um in some way or another are influenced by the things that happen to them or that they witness and see so yeah I definitely think that and I think that that's why we always have that section of our notes like how the author's life and experience relates to the book um because I think it always is very important to like think about as well as like why they wrote it and the yeah. background so it is very interesting um yes I I do agree with yeah you guys are all making great comments too um okay let's see so yeah historical context I kind of went over um do you want to just go right into writing sure yeah um <laughs> okay oh god yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get nervous <laughs> No, 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 it's okay. Um, I think, like, like what you're saying, like, your whole main point, right, like, um, Tolstoy's, like, focusing on this very, like, direct focus thing, and he's not worrying so much about the writing and stuff like that. Um, one of Tolstoy's, like, big critics and Tolstoy scholar, R.F. Christian, um, says in his, like, analysis of Resurrection that no serious critic would deny that Tolstoy's last novel is a vastly inferior work of art to the two great novels which preceded it. And like, it's just impossible. I think like reading it from going to, like going from War and Peace, which was one of my favorite books of the year. And of course, Anna Karenina. And then to this, it just, like it, it you know, it, there's like yeah. this and See, then there's this. I do feel like that's kind of like, like, a fault of my own at the same time, because when we were talking about creating the schedule, I yeah, feel yeah. because I keep asking myself, well, since this is such, one of his like last works, last major works, if we read it later after yeah. reading about like, because he didn't go from like, no, of course it's not, not like he wrote Anna Karenina and he then like, you know, know, what, next month right. he's like, I'm gonna write Resurrection. <laughs> so I think we do have to acknowledge that we have skipped like a huge part yeah, of definitely, definitely. history and his, his evolution as a writer because um, it is such a big space in time that we haven't seen um but i definitely agree in terms of the the bigger novels in length and in um in like the canon i guess um 
then I do feel like it is such a stark difference. And there are like benefits to that. And also like hindrances, like we're saying. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, you guys are all agreeing. Um, yeah, yeah. Like those are hard to top. It's very true. It's like some of the, the best works in literature. Yeah. Um, let's see. I liked it because it is about the peasants rather than the rich. That I think is one of the things that I loved the most about it was because it's it's giving us something that we haven't um, we haven't really experienced a lot in Russian in Russian literature and and it's bringing us closer to the people and I think that that's at the time it was um, incredibly new and and it gave people a, a different view which I feel like Dickens does so well too he always yeah. acknowledges the lower class and because he had such a wide readership same with Tolstoy when you talk about these topics about you know political issues then it brings people's focus to that mm -hmm. right away mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah um I love like because now with the the whole year we've done this we've like read all of Tolstoy's like major novels which is so fun um mm -hmm. but I think like with that information now it's hard to like with me like having them all laid out before me like the four of them right mm -hmm. um I just start to see like the patterns in like his language and like the way that he describes certain things and then I just, it's like really kind of frustrating actually to me because just like a mini example is the way he describes love or the way that he envisions love. Um, and actually like there's a lot of sentences that are like just kind of variations on the same, like love as like the sun or like mm -hmm. when Levin sees Kitty or even like in this one with Maslova being described as like this bright light and stuff. And that's like a small thing. And of course every author has like their own particular little like ways that they think of the world and stuff. But then when you lay out um like the plot and the structure and the characters of the four books like the four main dudes um Nikolenka I'm gonna say like Pierre and Levin and now Nekhludov it's like it's just I don't know I just really see like that they're all kind of variations on this one type and they go through very similar journeys and to me like mm -hmm. the journey is great I love Tolstoy's like writing and figuring of these people but then a lot of the times I think when Dickens gets accused of like creating caricatures or writing stereotypes or types or theatricality mm -hmm. um like comparing these four people I'm just like they are actually very similar and especially like just their ending in the books that they're featured in mm -hmm. um I'm just like it always seems that there's like some split second like awakening or redemption at the end of the book and they all turn to basically the same thing and start this new leaf um, or turn over this new leaf miraculously mm -hmm. um, and it just feel it just feels like unoriginal in that way to me or not unoriginal necessarily but I feel like it doesn't do very much for me like the journeys that they go on like while they're going on the journey I'm so invested but by the time these four men get to the end of the book I'm like mm -hmm. what what's really been done here yeah I don't know well all right, I'm going to argue with you. Okay, um, <laughs> I do feel like you could flip that and say the same thing yeah. about Dickens, though, because yeah. like, and, I, and about so many authors where they have a specific, you know, character type that they develop throughout their writing and that kind of go through the same things because yeah. we have those like structures of storytelling where it's the, you know, um, like coming of age and then a person that has to like go on a journey or come to terms or you need that you need to see their development and yeah. I feel like especially if it's because for Tolstoy he's writing about a specific time and he's writing about a specific people and in a specific culture so I think that so many people were going through these these things that that his characters were going through so how could he not write about them and I think it was just because we are so vast, like we're vast readers where we read from different cultures, we read from different authors and um, and we're very lucky to read a bunch of different classics. We can yeah. see different facets of literature. So I think that looking at one specific author, um, you could kind of argue that for for each yeah. author individually. So, uh, but I completely agree with you. And I do think that he does have, you know, tend to stick with the same structure yeah. of like, yeah. character's development and um, and coming to terms with like, you know, one of their experiences in life and how that relates to politics and religion and love and things that are often commented on his in his books. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree, but I do think that that's something that you could technically say about Everyone. almost all writers yeah um but yes um let's see 
my eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have something to say about writing. Okay. Yes. Um, so I wanted to mention that this book, because it was one of Tolstoy's latest, it was one of the most eagerly awaited because he created such a name for himself. He yeah. was so, you know, one of the most famous people in Russia. And um, one critic wrote that um, um, how all of us rejoiced when Tolstoy decided to um, make his first fiction in 25 years, not a short novella, but a full length novel. Um, and there's a quote that says, "My God, uh, may God grant that there will be more and more. Um, and it outsold Anna Karenina and War and Peace uh -huh. at the time that it was written. Because, you know, at the time that he wrote War and Peace and Anna Karenina, he didn't have his big of a name that he did when he wrote Resurrection. But I do think that it says a lot about Tolstoy as an author and also um, his readership was just so so vast. And I think that it's really interesting to, to think about how after all those years he did end up writing this story. And it, did, it didn't have as lasting an effect on like, it's not as widely read now in the Western world as yeah, yeah. And War and Peace. Um, but I do still think it's so important to- At the time, yeah. And, yeah, definitely at the time. See, that's like something that I was asking myself too a lot when reading this book was classics are mainly books that have like stood the test of time and that all of their themes are relevant to today. And I definitely think that this book, Resurrection specifically, definitely um, has stood the test of time because some of the themes, and I want to mention one of them as well, has, you know, relevance to today. Um, specifically, um, there's this one part where it's talking about how like good and evil are relative and how um, like people who have one belief stick with other people who have the same belief. And that's like, that's so relevant to today as well because like, you know, that's kind of like all of us readers love books. So we are going to talk and converse with other readers. Um, we can try to converse with other people who don't enjoy reading, but we're not gonna have the same effect. So I think it's kind of like water seeks its own level, which is, spoken about in this book it's one of the themes and I also think that like so in some cases I feel like this book did it stand the test of time as well as Anna Karenina and War and Peace maybe yeah. because it's not as widely read but I definitely think it still does have themes that are relevant to today yeah like I think like I didn't know that this book existed until we mm -hmm. sat down and compiled the list of every Dickens and Tolstoy work but I think mm -hmm. like it is so much more important in the end than on a crown or warm piece as much as like I love those books but um yeah that's all yeah that's what I was gonna say <laughs> um do you have anything else about writing like was there anything specific that you really didn't enjoy about it I'm I just curious the writing I just didn't like, to me like it I didn't really notice it was there right and I think that's that wasn't like that's Tolstoy's thing like he just not that he didn't care about his writing of course like you know, the sentences are sentences, but he is just trying to get across this um, message. And it does, sometimes it came off as like a bit preachy, which like we'll get to at the end and the intent and stuff. But I did miss like all of those sections that we were talking about from War and Peace on like that nice nature writing. But I think a lot of that nature writing is absent from Resurrection for a reason, because it's just like this yeah. grotesque picture of society and the justice system yeah. and stuff. So I do understand that, um, but I did still miss it. And overall, yeah. like I just, I just didn't, I don't know. I just felt so indifferent towards. Yeah, yeah. Writing, you know, because so, it wasn't like that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm wondering, like, it, was it an emotional connection that you just lacked with the book? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just didn't feel, just didn't mm -hmm. feel it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I feel like, it, you know, it's one of those things where it's just personal. Like, is it the fault of the book? Is it the fault of, you know, the author? Like, it's just, it's, I think, one of those things that it's so personal to people. And that's why I love. Yeah. You know, I love reading and I love hearing about other people's opinions of like my favorite book. Like if I find out that someone didn't enjoy Anna Karenina, I'm like, tell me why. Cause I like, why? Uh, um, yes. Anyway, um, do I have, I have um, one more point that I, that I read an article about it said um, that people complain that Resurrection's characters were one dimensional. Um, and that as as a whole, the book lacked Tolstoy's earlier intention to detail. Um, but by this point, Tolstoy was um, writing a style that favored meaning over aesthetic quality. And 
that's something that I think we were just talking about is he wasn't too concerned about creating a beautiful piece of prose writing. He was more concerned about the message and the meaning and what was happening politically and um, in the church that he wanted to bring attention to and I guess bring forth. Um, yes. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Um, so yes. Um, okay. Anything else for writing? Mm. <laughs> no? no. Okay. Oh, Emma is saying um, that there were still a lot of beautiful comparisons, though. I think definitely. I yeah. I just I think that in, in comparison, though, there were there is like a stark difference. I think because of his development as an author it did change quite a lot, even though it was still there. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to like give examples, you don't have to, but you totally could. Um, um, okay. Do you have anything you want to move on to character? Yeah, Maslova. Um, I thought this book, I didn't, I don't know. I guess when this book started, I thought it was going to be more about like them. You know, I didn't know it was going to be such like an in-depth um, not necessarily even novel. It kind of felt more like, you know, War and Peace where it slid into manifesto a lot um, mm -hmm. and like nonfiction and um, just like showing you like the very, very <laughs> <laughs> the very, very real um, ness of the situation. But I thought we were going to get so much more Maslova and like have her just yeah. feature so much more because to me, she was barely um, there at all. And I think that was like something that really disappointed me because um and that, that like leads into the structure of the book too, because it's just Nekhludov like going, having conversations with people um, who are just absolutely terrible people who are in positions of power and then having conversations with people who are accused of stuff and they shouldn't be and they're in jail when really they have no reason to be at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I just thought she was going to feature so much more. And yeah, that's, yeah, I just really yeah. wanted to. I mean, I do think that because we started off mainly with her with her narrative and her story and her being accused um wrong wrongfully accused i do think though that tolstoy didn't want to just put focus on one person specifically and one woman he did want to give because like i think that she was the catalyst for nekhludov realizing that See, that's what I didn't people, like. yeah like she's not the only one that has been wrongly accused and so i think that that's him you know that was the thing to encourage him to go down this um, this path and and to realize that it's not just her. So I do agree, um, and other people are agreeing as well um, that they wish that Maslova was more uh, her narrative was more part of the story. And I definitely agree, especially because, like, as a a modern female reader, like reading classics that have strong strong female leads or female characters, it's so great. Um, but I do feel like was that Tolstoy's goal specifically to talk about Maslava as a person or more all of the no, people, no, no. you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so definitely. Um, I also found it really funny that Nekhludov, like his whole thing was that he wanted to save Maslava and he was the only one that could save her. And Maslava the whole time just like didn't he, she didn't want that from him and I do think that it was quite clever of Tolstoy to realize that like it wasn't like she just wanted to be saved like she yeah. didn't you know so I do feel like that was something that I did like seeing um yeah. yes um and then do, do you have any thoughts about Nekhludov or uh <laughs> I just, I don't know. I did not like him at all. Um, to me, like, that's the thing. Like, I don't know if it's really, like, the character I didn't like or just, like, the way that Tolstoy is writing characters in this book, like Maslova included, because I think, like, it is, like, a huge question, right, when you come to, when you write a book and you are totally infusing it with your ideology, which is totally what Tolstoy is doing. Um, you're writing with the set idea in mind that you want to get out. It's, like, his final last, like, desperate plea to... Mm -hmm. whoever's going to read it which was clearly a lot of people um but then it kind of takes it like ask the question like is this still does it undermine the art of the novel when everything is touched with this ideology when you could argue that and that one critic you said did that people are more mm -hmm. stick figures just like being propped up by these mm -hmm. things that Tolstoy is trying to show you and I think for me I felt that a lot 
with Nekhludov because Mm -hmm. um, he does have that like just ran, not random, but um, awakening at the start where Maslova, you could argue, is more of just just an object to like propel him on his journey. Mm -hmm. Um, Or as you said, she also represents so many other people who are suffering the same thing. But um, it's just I think when everything is infused with that driving force, it makes me very suspicious and like not fully engage with the characters when I know that they are there to uphold the structure that Tolstoy is trying to get out to the world if that makes sense so like I just yeah but on the whole like I just found him so um annoying and just like he's doing he's trying to do the right things right but um just I don't ew <laughs> Did we just say anything? Um. <laughs> oh god yeah I mean I don't know yeah I I liked the fact that Because, like, I was kind of seeing, like, did Tolstoy put some of himself? Because I always feel like Tolstoy puts himself in in his characters. And I do think that that, you know, was it Tolstoy saying that I went down this path of, like, gambling and, um, and, you know, being being quite, quite a... uh, quite a young man and then kind of coming to you know coming to terms with that and sort of reevaluating his life and trying to do better um something else that I did think about that I wanted to mention to you okay um because we're reading a Christmas carol for December I started reading it the other night and of course it's about this main character who is confronted by a spirit and says if you don't change and if you don't um like treat people better than you are going to suffer in the afterlife. And I, and I also feel like it's kind of, it's similar themes in A Christmas Carol and Resurrection, where it's like, you know, Ebenezer Scrooge is, is looking at, okay, this is what I've done. I need to do better. And it's the same thing with Nekhludov. Like he realizes, you know, he doesn't have a spirit come and visit him, um, but he does realize, and then he wants to do better because he's seen what his, um, actions have caused so that was something that I didn't expect to be like oh I kind of make a connection between those it's kind of the last point they kind of like said it right because um the oh where'd it go the main character was trying too hard to be a knight in shining armor to the point where it's kind of selfish and like it kind of gets confused Mm -hmm. like are you trying to do this because you've awakened and you see what's good and like you care for people or are you doing this because you feel guilty you want to be a good person you suddenly think you have to do all of these things like in one case he even says oh I don't I'm not gonna love you for um like my own sake because I love you I'm gonna love you because I think you need me to love you and because God wants me to love you Mm -hmm. um and I'm just like that what what are you doing (laughs) Um, yeah I don't know it just felt like he was this like vehicle for Tolstoy's own remorse but then also Mm -hmm. for um this new transformation that he wants to see um you know take place in society but just Mm -hmm. as a character really like could not care less and did not really enjoy reading from his point of view but Mm -hmm. um, I think anyone in the main character in this book would have been the same like simply because Tolstoy is like so pushing it with and it's like a good thing to push right I'm not saying that like oh don't show these things I think they obviously need to be shown but Mm -hmm. um I think like when people accuse Dickens of like that lack of reality or like that, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, just the lack of reality. I think some of that could be said in here too when it is a lot um, pushed by Tolstoy's like ideology Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. 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 I do feel like, like the further we're getting to the author's works, we're getting more um, like they're, they're bringing a lot to the forefront in terms of like the condition of the people. Like I know in Nicholas Nickleby, I was so like heartbroken by the conditions yeah. of the yeah. boarding houses that the boys, you know, yeah. the boys hall. And it's same thing for bringing us um, on the journey to like exile in Siberia. When I was reading those sections, I was just heartbroken yeah. because of all the people that have gone through that. And like, even thinking about like Dostoevsky, I've, you know, fallen in love with Dostoevsky's writing this year. And like thinking about how he was also exiled to Siberia at a point in his life. And like, no wonder why he had, you know, the experiences and and how it influenced his writing. I can only imagine. And so Tolstoy taking us there, I think is just so incredible and important. Um, And it's the same thing with Dickens bringing us to like the workhouses and to, um, like the boarding schools and, and taking us into those places that that need our acknowledgement. 
I think is really important. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Do you want to go into plot? Yeah. Did you want to start? Sure. Do you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm trying to read. My eyes are very bad. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. No worries. Well, we um, let's see. Oh, okay. So I think what I loved the most about the plot was how he not only gave us Maslova's experience, but it was like, I, like we said, like a catalyst for all these other characters. And I loved hearing about, even though it was heartbreaking, like the conditions and the things that everyone else went through to put themselves in that position. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. You just made a face. <laughs> okay. no, no, I was just smiling at the comment. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I was like, did I, did I do no, something? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I wrote down, um, <laughs> Yeah, um, when he sees like people chained without cause, beaten without cause, um, and the, and the condition, I think yeah, there was this a twelve year old boy sleeping in a lake of human dung from an overflowing latrine, like like the the rawness that he captured and just like the way that he put it to the forefront, I really I loved, um, and I think but anyway, like the plot overall, I did really enjoy because we got you know like. We got Maslova and Nekludov like in their early life. And I liked how Tolstoy didn't spend too much time giving us like their entire background. He was just kind of like, this is how it happened. And this is where it's leading us, which I do like how he like set us up into the actual narrative. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do I have too much to say about plot? Not really. No, no like, <laughs> that's the thing, right? It's not like, I'd almost say like that there is no... It's just too real for there to be a plot almost but i think like that's what i would say with this one like i would rather i would rather read like a completely non-fiction book about this time period about the justice system about the conditions about siberia than read um resurrection like that's what i would like say because i'm like why do i want almost pretty much the same information but with tolstoy like, you know, he is a novelist, but at this point in his life, he's, like, kind of changing more towards this, like, prophet figure who's trying to mm -hmm. fix the world and stuff. But I I would just rather, you know, read a uh, historian, historical book. But at the, same, at the same time, though, yeah. like, you know that very common saying, like, um, fact is stranger than fiction or, like, like, comparing fact and fiction? Like, I do feel like could we... Like, is there a difference in terms of reading um, a nonfiction account and reading Resurrection? Because even though it is fiction, it is based on real events. So I don't know. I mean, like, I, I completely understand what you're saying. Yeah. But I do, I do feel like with certain history books and certain nonfiction books, can we get the intimacy and the emotion that you can in fiction? Um, I mean, I'm sure you could, depending on the writer, depending on how they wrote. Um, but no, I, I definitely understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like, it's not like a super strong feeling that I'm like, oh, I don't want to read this. I would rather read like a nonfiction, but I just think, mm -hmm. um, like just with the ending and the way that it, I don't know, like, obviously it's so real and like, I do appreciate that, but, um, like what, what I'm trying to say, I think is like, as a novel, is this what I want to be reading when I can get like kind of a broader not necessarily a broader but just a book that is does the same kind of thing I guess but mm -hmm. like that is Tolstoy is also like such a strong point as well with his writing so I don't know but yeah yeah okay yeah um I do yeah people are saying that they loved seeing their youth like I I definitely yeah. love the beginning because I do think it was just such a great introduction to the characters and I also do feel like it's like the influence of um oh yes we're, we're going to talk about the ending <laughs> um but yeah I do I do think it's like I don't know it's a great example of like how certain certain um events in your life like develop who you become later on and yeah. like would Nekludov you know, if he wasn't on on the jury, would like how would that change him? Like that would completely change his life. Um, 
Yeah. I do want to talk about before I before I move on. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to find a note that I wrote down and not get it. What did you want? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I found it. It's an intent. I'm like, that's okay. fine. Okay, okay, okay. Do you want to talk about intent? Because I feel like you have a lot. I do have a lot, so maybe you should go first. No, no, no. You go first. I should go first? Yeah. Are we talking about the ending? Oh, you want to just go straight to the ending? Well, I think with the whole intent, like, the ending is... Well, yeah, I mean, true. Um, okay, I'll just see my one piece okay. that I was just looking for. Okay. okay. Um, so I wanted to talk about the scene where Nekhludov gives his land to his peasants because at that time that was like unheard of yeah. and and very um, just like revolutionary revolutionary yes um, which I felt like was something that I don't know I was just so shocked by by that and he was kind of like okay well you know I'm giving everything up and and giving it to not only like a relation or a friend or because, you know, passing it down but to, to the peasantry, I think, was just like, when I read that, I was like, oh, my God. And then, of course, now that gives a lot of power or I guess, like, it gives the peasants more, you know, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to wanted to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. I talked about how it outsold War and Peace in Anna Karenina. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I talked about that. Okay, I just want to make sure that I don't forget anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, okay. I think I'm good. <laughs> oh, okay. Do, do you want me to go on the rant? Please go on your rant. It's, I, okay, it's not that long of a rant, but <laughs> I think, like, the ending is the, the last, like, I don't know how many pages it is, literally, like, five pages. Um, <laughs> Someone said he was like, I, I think I'll simply stop writing, which like, yes, to an extent. But um, I was reading a couple articles I read. The only one I really want to mention is this essay called The Theological Dimensions of Tolstoy's Resurrection. And it's by David Patterson. And it was all about like the theology in resurrection. And I will say one good thing about that. Like, I really appreciated how like it wasn't only the justice system and the government and stuff like that that he examined, but like the church as well. And yeah. Like, for example, we had that whole scene with the priest where he's just a complete goofball, like doing goofy things, um, to put it lightly. But then I just think he also says that Tolstoy believes in a deeply ingrained and oftentimes naive faith in the basic goodness of human nature. And that's kind of like part one of where I want to like start with the problems I had with it because this whole book like examines the institutions that he says like creates these conditions for people to commit crime or for people in power to have an excess of control um, and huge bias over people who are then just thrown into prison um, and the fault primarily lies with the institutions and it's like yes to an extent but Tolstoy just goes so much further and he just keeps repeating that people like at their very basic core are good and they love each other and they have pity for each other. Um, and to me, that seems like a very like overly confident um, and like evidence list thing to say. Um, and that's kind of where I was like, okay, what, where's the ending going? Cause like that points mm -hmm. brought up like a few pages before. Um, but then in this essay, like it talks about like, what is the resurrection of like mm -hmm. resurrection? Like how do you get around to that redemption? Mm -hmm. And the answer is like love, of course, that's like what Nekhludov comes to. Um, he says that we know that we pass from death to life if we love our brother. He who does not love his brother has no eternal life. And so the dynamic of redemption is a di dynamic of love. Um, and then on page 480, he's like, he's quoting, he just goes to the Bible, basically, and he opens the Bible. And then it's the passage that like, I forgave thee all the debts because thou besoughtest me shouldest not thou also have had mercy on thy fellow servant even as I had mercy on thee and then Nekhludov is like yeah that's it like that is the basic thing just love forgiveness forgive a thousand million times have mercy on everyone forgive everyone um which is great obviously I would advocate for that but like to place this almost ludicrous faith I think in humanity because he's arguing for basically just this huge erasure of um, 
<laughs> society and like the justice system and stuff like that. And I'm 100% not saying that those things are good. Obviously we see they're like awful. Um, but what he's saying is like, um, the only certain means of salvation from the terrible evil from which men are suffering is that they should always acknowledge themselves to be guilty before God and therefore unable to punish or reform others um, because they themselves are evil. And then the usual objection, what is one to do with the evil doer doers? Surely not let them go unpunished. Um, Nekhludov now understood that society and order in general exist, not thanks to these lawful criminals who judge and punish others, but because notwithstanding their depraving influence, men still pity and love one another. Um, <laughs> excuse me? <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Um, like he's saying, all we have to do, you know, let's get rid of everything. Let's just start over. And he's, I think, essentially saying, if you just place everyone in the world in this field and we have no laws, we have no, you know, punish system for criminals who are evil people deep down because he doesn't believe that anyone, you know, he believes that people are intrinsically good. Everything is just going to be fine and dandy. No, it's going to be the purge. What are you saying? Like, that's just completely ridiculous. And then his answer to that, after he's saying we should not follow any laws, is to open the Bible and be like, okay, no, we're going to follow these five laws. But he's arguing that we shouldn't follow laws because they're written by people who are evil. But the five laws in the Bible that he's saying we should follow are written. Who are they written by? They're written by men. And he's like, oh, let's just hand everyone these five <laughs> laws of the gospel and we're going to be fine. Like, are you... It just actually made me upset. <laughs> like, I was like, this is the ending. And then he just stops. Like, that is no solution. That's actually, like, a really stupid thing to say, I think. How did you, I really just, I, did I get, did I miss something? Did yeah. I, like, is that yeah. not what he's suggesting? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I mean. What? Tolstoy. <laughs> I know, like, he's very, he is, like, quite, like, towards the end of his life, he did turn towards or before then, I guess, religion and God and stuff. But then yeah. he spends so much of this book perfectly critiquing the church um, and dogmatism and everything like that. And then the ending, he's just like, oh, hey, if we follow these five laws, um, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Even he, though he just argued not to. Yeah. I know. I he know. just ruined the whole thing. It ruined the whole thing. For me. <laughs> and I know he lived at that time. I know he lived at that time. But I think you can yeah. still have some, like, sense. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. What did you think? I really want to know what you think. Or like what anyway. I had I had a similar reaction okay. to I was just kinda like, hmm. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> but you know, like I guess I just I don't know. I I think like I took it with a grain of salt because it was yeah. written so long ago and I did know that like his beliefs at the time that he that this was written and um <laughs> that ending was not it <laughs> um yeah but I don't know I think like as an ending did I love it compared to his other endings no um do I agree with you yes but do I feel like there like is it our place to I don't know like it's I think like acknowledging the historical context, acknowledging his beliefs, that's the ending that he gave us and that's the one that that we're left with. But I, I think I think what's interesting is like taking that and really thinking about your your reaction to it. Yeah. I think it's more interesting than because like obviously times have changed, things have developed, people have developing beliefs, um, and different beliefs. So I do feel like I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think it's like also <laughs> not super strong on both points because even like if you just you read that and you're like, fine, whatever, don't agree. That's completely fine. But then mm -hmm. I think like someone was saying the more the sort of spiritual ending uh, or non ending in Anacron and Warmpeace made more sense because of the structure of the stories to me like that all of a sudden like last 20 or 30 pages where Levin or Pierre or Nekhludov all of a sudden reads the Bible and they're like, oh, wait a second. Now I understand it. To me, not only does that not make any sense, but I think it, it feels just lazy. It feels sloppy. I feel like it just feels, it feels wrong every time I read it. And I'm like, not necessarily because I disagree with them, but just because of the structure of the yeah. novel and the way that it's done. It just, it, that's the way it always has to end. And I'm like, 
don't like don't sacrifice your novel your art to what you believe in like you can have a different ending Mm -hmm. um yeah and just the fact that that's what he says, like after presenting, like he's so good. He sees everything awful and he takes the time to write a 500 page book about it. But then he just throws that as the solution. Like it feels almost like that feels like a crime. Like that's what you're going to suggest. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think. Like, can I, you know, can I debate that ending? I don't even know if, if anyone can. Yeah, I, think, I think it really, I think it really depends on, like, everyone's personal beliefs. Um, and, like, I don't know. It's such, I feel like religion and, I don't know. Like, these topics are so touchy and I feel like it really is. Because maybe someone would read that and think, oh, yes, completely. You know, like, we don't know, so. Well, I can read that, and I can be like, yes, completely. Like, that's great. Don't kill each other. But I'm going to say, is this realistic? Are people, are you going to hand everyone this sheet with five laws on it? And are they going to agree with you? Even if I believe wholeheartedly in that? Absolutely not. Because people are people. I really don't know why he thinks that they are intrinsically, like, going to pity and love each other. Um, When, like, he's so good at seeing the realness of society and the realness of people. Mm-hmm. But then that's what he believes. That's, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's why, like, I hated it um, so much. Um, did you hate not, the whole thing or did you no, mean? No, 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 no. Not the whole thing. Like, and when I say hate, I'm really just being, like, dramatic. But, um, <laughs> like, I was like, this is amazing. Like, this is a great study. But I think if you just want to slice out the last 10 pages, um, because to me that just, I don't know. Like, did he write that? knowing that was going to be his ending for this yeah well Whitney is asking a really good question um what did the people of Tolstoy's time yeah. think was ending uh, yeah I would love to know that that's something that I didn't look into um which I feel like would be really interesting yeah um yeah because like at that time Tolstoy had such a, a name for himself and he was so renowned as a writer and uh, and his following was so was so great. So I, I wonder if people read that and were like, oh, yes, yes, you know. Um, so I, think- the real, I don't know. The real solution was obviously the revolution. And yeah, exactly. Clearly did not have those five rules. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think that it's wonderful to think that way. But like you're saying, is it realistic? You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's so fun to talk about, though. Like, it's so many. Yeah, things. yeah. And, like, th- this is this is true, too. Like, but in real life, how could he have ended it? The issues were messy. People were messy. Bureaucracy and religion were messy. It's difficult to navigate. Definitely. I think um, they're all such, like, touchy subjects. And um, and I, I think the whole, the whole book is just saying, like, that this is the world that we live in. We have to acknowledge it. And yeah, I think that was enough. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think that was perfect. Like, I think that is, like, the only solution he can give us here. I don't think he should yeah. have gone on to just, you know. Yeah. Well, we do have to remember that Tolstoy was quite yeah, preachy, especially at the end of his life where he yeah. was like, this is the way to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Yes. But um, mm-hmm. just want to make sure I'm not missing my comments. I did have a quote that I wanted to share. Um, if we've gotten, I mean, if you want to get to quotes already, but yeah, sure. I think it might have some relevance. Let me get to where I want to begin. Um, I can't okay. believe those novels. Mm, what? I can't believe we're done all his novels. We do have like oh, yeah. The Death of Ivan Ilyich and then yeah. Haji Mirat, which I know are like two that I'm super excited to get to. But I do agree, like we don't have like big, you know, big books. Um I'm just gonna read this whole thing because I feel like okay. it is, 
you know. Okay, so this is chapter 59 on page 252 of my edition. One of the commonest and most generally accepted delusions is that every man can be qualified in some particular way, said to be kind, wicked, stupid, energetic, pathetic, and so on. People are not like that. We may say of a man that he is more often kind than cruel, more often wise than stupid, more often energetic than pathetic, or vice versa, but it could never be true to say of one man that he is kind or wise, and of another that he is wicked or stupid. Yet we are always classifying mankind in that way, and it is wrong. Human beings are like rivers. The water is one and the same in all of them, but every river is narrow in some places, flows swifter in others. Here it is broad, there still, or clear, or cold, or muddy, or warm. It is the same with men. Every man bears within him the germs of every human quality, and now manif manifests one, now another, and frequently is quite unlike himself, while still remaining the same man. In some people, the... Voltface? Volt Voltface? Voltface? Um, is particularly abrupt, and to this category belonged to Nekludov, his... Um, his shifts of mood were due both to physical and spiritual causes, and just such a change took him, uh, took him in now. So I do, I did like how he's comparing men to rivers and like, um, yeah, human beings are like rivers. And I love the part where, um, it says... Mm -hmm. that he is kinder or wise and of another that he is wicked or stupid yet we are always classifying mankind in this way and it is wrong human beings are like rivers the water is one and the same in all of them but every river is narrow in some place flows yada 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 um and i do think that it, it's so true and it's one of those things that like this is what i love about tolstoy's writing and like even though we didn't get um certain nuances that we did in his earlier works, like in Anna Karenina and War and Peace, like that, when I read it, I was just like, oh my God, like this is the Tolstoy that I love. Um, and I do love that comparison because I think what he's saying is like, we can't classify people because we're so different and and we have different qualities in us and we can all um, evolve and change and still be one person, which, you know, I, I don't know, I just loved yeah yeah that was one of my favorites too yeah. um but definitely yeah if you guys have favorite quotes and you want to leave them definitely do um do you have do you did you have any quotes i love how you asked <laughs> because i didn't i had a feeling <laughs> um wait i don't it wasn't like a quote like but that's i don't know i don't even know what i'm saying Mm, no like that one I did have highlighted um the uh, the earth cannot be anyone's property it cannot be bought or sold any more than water air or sunshine um I don't know if I actually had that one tab for a quote or for like a point mm. but like no and that's okay that's okay <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> that's okay um I do have another one. This one's really short, but I um, I talked about resurrection in one of my recent videos and someone commented that they loved all of the quotes about springtime. Yeah. Um, and one of my favorites was, every man and every living creature has a sacred right to the gladness of springtime. I just thought that, that I don't know. I was like, I'll talk nice. about Right. Um, yes. Oh, let's see. Um, oh, Okay. All were happy, plants, birds, insects, and children, but grown-up people, adults, men, adult men and women, never left off cheating and tormenting themselves and one another. Giving us the truth, Tolstoy. <laughs> um, <laughs> see. Here we have another one. Um, it is not this spring morning which they uh, considered sacred and important, not the beauty of God's world given to all creatures to enjoy, a beauty which inclines the heart to peace, to harmony. And do we have more? Oh, is that going into the like other? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Should I put the Should I put the poll up now? Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna okay. pull up on my YouTube channel. So it should either be in your description boxes or it should just be on my community tab. Um, let's see. Um, Whoa, I just got so freaked out. I went on YouTube and I saw him. <laughs> the home page is like <laughs> it was like a mirror. Okay, sorry. Oh wait, did you Where see? That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh. <laughs> wait, can I vote? Oh no, maybe I should. Yes. No. I just haven't put it up yet. Hold on a second. Oh, I didn't I mm, I'm not hating on well, I'm hating a little bit on Tolstoy, but <laughs> um, like it's good you know what I mean it's good like I, I still enjoy hating on I still me. enjoy I even though you like warm <laughs> just like changed my year um where so, yeah. changed your year you said yeah yeah amazing okay I I uh, posted it so everyone if you want to go vote for Dickens or Tolstoy it should be the community tab or um in your subscription boxes but i know sometimes they don't show up on certain devices um yes oh, i love this <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> oh i like this to sum it up the novel also penetrates deeply into the human soul tells that every person no matter how low he falls will always have strength I like and that hope. Um, yes and hope overcomes his fate and to find happiness uh, this is the main idea of Tulsa's resurrection, definitely. Who is Willow voting for this time? Willow's downstairs. Um, she's not. She's not with me, but she votes Tulsa. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She votes both. She votes both. Um, oh, t see, we have Team Dickens. Team Dickens. Um, Team Tulsi, this is five star read for me. That's amazing. Yeah. I love seeing the wide range because sometimes I'll be reading and I'm like, oh, you know, I think that that people have like certain opinions about it, and then it's so different. So, yes, Tolstoy, Dickens, Dickens. Oh, this is a good question. Will the Christmas Carol live show be before Christmas Day? Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, would, I would like that. I know. can do that. I can do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> is Willow aware there's a live show on her channel? <laughs> yes, she's aware. She's fine with it. She's like, you know what? You guys can debate you two silly authors. I'm going to sit down and take a nap. <laughs> um, when will the Christmas Carol live show be? We haven't picked an exact date yet, but we will soon. And then once we do, we'll post about it. And... Um, and let you guys know. Okay, let's let's check this. Oh, okay. Hello. Um, we have forty three votes in already, which is great. You guys are fast. Um, Dickens has fifty eight. Tolstoy has forty two. Wow. Well, I don't know how I feel about that. No, okay. <laughs> um. What month are you going to read the Kritzer Sonata? I will pull up my schedule. Like we said, um, like we said in the Monday. Nicholas McQueen debate, um, we're going to have new, like in the beginning of 2022, we're going to post new videos explaining the schedule and all that stuff. Because um, we have made some changes. Let me just see where Kritzer Sonata is. Um, is it next year? It's in July of 2023. Oh. July of 2023 is when we are reading the kids. Right, like, um, yes. But yes, yeah, so we will go over like the new schedules. Um, if we've made any other changes. Yeah. Oh, are we reading Mr. Dickens and his Carol this month as well? Yes, if you want to. That's optional. You don't have to, though. Um. You must. <laughs> you must. You Everyone must read it. is obliged. <laughs> My okay, there we go. My mouse was just freaking out for a second. There. 
Um, if you have any questions, definitely ask so that we can get to them now. Um, or if you have any questions and you're watching this after the live show was live, you can leave them in the comment, which is totally fine. Um, Um, I'm just so excited. This is crazy. Did you actually start reading a Christmas carol yet? Me? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. And this is your first reread, right? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh. Thoughts, thoughts? Any thoughts, Lauren? So good. So um, good. I know. Okay, Ooh, we have another one. Um, when are we going to do Barnaby Reg? Also, this December. Um, no, this December is just a Christmas carol and Mr. Dickens and his carol optional if you want to. Barnaby Rudge is going to be February and March of 2022. Um, but in January, we are going to be reading the Sevastopol stories and the Raid by Tolstoy because we're reading Dickens this month. So Tolstoy would be January for next month. Um, I think <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> yes. Can I be Bob Cratchit? Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Or I could be one of the spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I could be Jacob Marley. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um. Okay. All right. Dude, am I believing my eyeballs? What? Chicken? Oh my god. Oh, wait, uh, let me check it out. Darl's chickens? Darl's chickens? <gasps> it got even. Oh my god. Okay, the last poll that I posted on my community tab is from two months ago, and it was Tolstoy 76, Dickens 24. Now we're at 61 Dickens, 39 Tolstoy <laughs> with 54 votes. Damn. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, someone just voted, voted Tolstoy. Okay. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Apparently, people need to see you in a top hat. <laughs> oh, I do not have. I need to get a top hat. <laughs> Is there going to be a Dostoevsky club in the future? I would love that. I would love that. Me too. Um, Dickens getting more votes is making me so happy. Me too. I mean... Look, gosh, yeah, I mean, he deserves it. Come on. Um, Dickens rise. <laughs> oh, oh it's, uh, Inga is saying Tolstoy will gain. Oh. He votes tomorrow. It is night in Russia. Hello. <laughs> I know it's so it's so hard, though, because like we're getting to the point where like I am loving A Christmas Carol, one of my favorite books on the face of the earth and so to like compare like now the dickens that i'm like oh, yes dickens and then the tolstoy that i i still you know always love tolstoy it's just so hard um yeah oh so fun oh that's nice we have that at uni i studied russian language and every 14 days you every 14 days wow 14 days. Does that mean you have to read a novel in 14 days? Um, let's see. Dickens is going to make the biggest comeback. I feel it. See, that's what I, that has been my pr prediction since the very start. I was like, we're starting off with like strong Tolstoy and not, you know, strong Dickens. And it's, you know, tables are going to, tables are going to turn. Yeah. Tables going to table. <laughs> Yeah, okay okay we are at 59 to dickens 41 tolstoy so this is going to be permanently changing um so it'll be exciting to see the final result maybe in like you know a day or so you know what? i had a dream a couple nights ago that um what's his face the dick john um mullen john mullen john mullen what was about in, was in one of the debates. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my god, I would yeah. love that. And Simon Sharma, imagine. What if I emailed them and like? <laughs> I mean, I would be so nervous because it's like we're just like, like baby amateurs, and they're like, yeah, 
who are you people um oh my god that would that would be amazing you One said, of the days, i'm just gonna surprise you and be like we have a special guest <laughs> i think i would like i don't know i i think i would just be speechless i wouldn't know what to do with myself yeah oh my god someone commented on my video um yeah. talking about a book that i think it's Katie from Books and Things was reading um, um, John Mullins' uh, The Artful Dickens. Oh, and yeah, she was, yeah. oh, like, I think you and Emma would really like that book. And I was just reading that comment. So that book is like one of the last books of, yeah. of the schedule. Um, yeah. Oh, you love John Mullen. Yeah, John Mullen is so great. I was actually just re-watching. He did a lecture at the, I think it was the Dickens Museum in London. Oh, it's the Christmas. Yes, he was talking about A Christmas Carol. Yeah. Um, he's so great. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh, that'd be fun. Yes. yes. Do I have an Anna Karenina outfit? Um, I semi-dressed up as Anna Karenina for Halloween last year and also yeah. for that print in a debate I kind of did so like yes and no <laughs> um, yes oh my gosh Carolyn would have loved the books we read in school here Russian literature is the only thing we study sign me up <laughs> sign <Bye>. me. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh I have like lost count of how many times I have watched the Dickens versus Tolstoy debate like the original mm -hmm. I did it just gets better okay. I know. I th I also think it's so great because, like, now that we have more under our belts of like reading more Dickens and Tolstoy, I feel like you can even get more out of what they're talking about, like in terms of uh, yeah. their writing. And anyway, okay. Um, let me check one more time, and then we'll say oh. goodbye. Um, let's see. Fifty-eight Dickens, forty-two Tolstoy. Things are slowly shifting. Just. <laughs> okay well i think that is all um like we have said we're reading a christmas carol this month and mr dickens and his carol that's the optional choice and then our live show will hopefully be before christmas day so we'll post about it and let everyone know but yes Thank you so much for joining us again. This is so good. Oh. For another live show. This, I think, this was really fun because it was very yeah, like you know him. we had a good we had a good conversation, which I always love. Um, yes. Okay. Okie dokie. Yes. All right. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. And if you're joining us for a Christmas Carol and Mr. Dickens and his Carol, I hope that you enjoy. And we will see you at the end of this month, right before Christmas. So. Oh. Yay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.